couple weeks ago, I think it was in video O3M, I showed you how to pass data between pages. We talked about navigation pages and we did it three different ways. We did it through the constructor, but then we also set up a custom class and created an object that we share the data either on the, on the source page or on the target page. And I kind of want to go back over that a little bit in terms of setting up a custom class to share information across pages using an instance of that custom class on the source page. In this example, I have four pages, a settings page, a lions page, a tiger page, and a bear page. And there's text in the lion page that is coming from my data class. My, and so I created a class called settings. And next week we'll talk about model view, view model. So I created a folder for models, created this class called settings. 30 years ago, there was a group of computer scientists known as the Gang of Four that wrote a foundational book on object-oriented programming called Design Patterns. And they come up with, I think it was 34 different design patterns, um, one of which was called a singleton. And a singleton guaranteed that only one instance of that class would be created in the application. Now, I didn't set this up as a singleton. Um, it's not restricting multiple instances, but we're going to use it as a singleton with just one instance set up on our on our settings page, which actually is our main page, that can then be accessed from the other pages. The thing I want to show you here is on this settings page, I created string properties for the content of the lion page, the tiger page, and the bear page, and then adding that content in as we navigate to those pages. There's an advantage to doing this here rather than in the text file as the programmer is we can easily change this text uh, in the instance. We can modify it uh, along the way, but I can also find all the text here easily that I can maybe correct a, a spelling error or something if I find rather than go back to the text file and then reload that text file. Um, this just, I think, makes it a little bit easier. So notice that I also have properties here for the background color, the text color, and the username. So when I came to the lion page, it's using that background color of red, the text color is black, and the username is John. So we see, we see John, did you know this about lions? Same thing on the tigers page. We get John, let's learn about tigers. And on the bears page, I didn't set the background color or the text color. I left it as the default white and black, but I did use the username of John. Here's some info about bears. On the settings page, I can change that username. So I'm going to type in my name. I'm going to change the background color. Let's make it a dark green. I'm going to set this to white and say save those settings. So in memory now, the instance that I created for the settings class now has the background color is green, the text color is white, and the username is Steven. And if I go to the Lions page, we're going to see that put into play. So I have a, back, a green background, white text, Steven, did you know this about Lions? There's my Tigers page, again, green and white, my name. And on the Bears page, we left it as white and black, so we didn't set those colors from the settings instance, but I do have my name reflected here. So let's take a look at how this was done in the code. In my project, I added a folder for models by coming up to my project, right clicking and choosing to add a new folder. So I named that models and then in the models folder, I added a C sharp empty class that I named settings.cs. And here's the code for settings.cs. So the namespace here is the name of my project.models. And I created three variables that are public. These would actually be considered properties or attributes. Red for my background color as the default, black for my text color, and a user of John. And then also set strings for lion info, tiger info, and bear info, which is the text I want to have displayed on those three pages. Rather than hard coding that on those pages, I'm going to have those pages read this from an, the, from an instance of this class. And this makes it really easy to make changes. All the text is located in one spot. And for those who had problems with maybe getting the embedded text file to be read and utilized, this kind of solves that problem. 
um, in that it's readily available through this class instance. My constructor is simply public settings. So there's nothing being said done to, this, to the constructor other than creating an instance that has access to all these six properties. Let's take a look at the app shell XAML. I set, set this up with a tab bar, nothing out of the ordinary there. But in the app shell XAML, I created a directive for accessing my namespace.models and created a public static settings instance called myinfo of new settings. So I'm using the settings class to create an instance called myinfo. I don't need to put this directive on the other pages because we're, we're going to access my info through the public static settings here. So let's take a look then at the lion page. The lion, the tiger, and the bear are really all the same. They have a vertical stack layout inside a scroll view. I set the image to lion.png. And so in the images, I brought in the bear, lion, and tiger.png files. Set the source instance, gave it a width, made an aspect fit. And then I have my two labels. One is the title label, LVL title. I did set that to lion. And then for the info, I just simply set the text to info because we're going to change that on the fly in the CS code. So here's the, the lion.xaml.cs code. And what I added here was a protected override void on navigated. Now, initially I put my stuff here in the constructor for the lion page. And that caused a problem because when we go to the page through the navigation system, it creates an instance. But when we come back to that page, it may already be on the stack. And so it's not creating a new instance. And so the data wasn't changing. So I want to do that every time I navigate to the page. So we're overriding an existing method called on navigated to. I want to pass the method to the base. And then we're setting the text of LBL info to that username and then a literal string of comma. Did you know this about lions? I have a carriage return and then I'm using the data coming from my info dot lion info. That's the text I want to display that was in the settings class. Then I set the text color to my info dot text color. And I did that both for the, the info label and the title label. And then I set the background color of the page to that myinfo.bg. Notice I'm referencing the app shell. So it's telling it where to find my info. It resides in the app shell class. I did the same thing for the tiger. Basically the same XAML code. So if I change the text to tiger, change the source, and then on the tiger CS code, really the same thing. Other than I'm using myinfo.tigerinfo, the others are all the same. And on the bear, same XAML code, other than we're using bear.png. The text is bear. And on the C sharp code, I commented out changing the colors for the labels and the background, just to demonstrate that it is using that background color on the other pages. If, however, I were to uncomment this, we would see the color reflected then if I rerun my application, which I'll do right now. We can put in a new name of Jack. Let's go with a dark blue this time. And I'll set the color to white again. Let's go save settings. And now if I go to the Lions page, it is blue. And I have Jack, did you know this about Lions? The Tigers page is also blue. And then the bears page, now we've set to use that background color so it's blue and white. If I come back to the settings, let's change this. We'll make it um, maybe more of a magenta color. We'll do black for our text color. I'm going to change the name again this time. I'm going to type in Beth save my settings. And now on the lions page, I'm getting Beth. Did you know this about lions? I'm getting that magenta color with the black color. Same with the tigers and same with the bears. So that's how we can use a singleton type instance to share data among our pages. 
I'm going to suggest using this technique in an upcoming project in practicing shell flyouts. And we have a project called Flyouts, Strikeouts, and Hits, in which we're demonstrating how to keep score in a baseball game. Recording hits, strikeouts, base running, and so forth. All the text on these pages is placed in a class called info.cs. And I make this class available to you, so you don't have to create all this. It's available to you in the Canvas course site. But in this case, notice that for the main page, I've got a main title and a main info. If we look at the main page XAML, you'll see LBL title, LBL info. And then on the CS side, I'm setting the text of those two labels to app.shell.info.maintitle and main info. The app.shell then is accessing the models folder where that class resides and then creating an info instance of my info class. And we're using that as a singleton. It's not really a true singleton, but we're using it as a singleton. It's just that one instance. And again, this lets me put all the, the text data on one page and make it easily accessible. And I can easily, I can make changes then if needed on this page in one spot for each of the various pages of the app. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.